Howdy, Illuminata. Last week, we talked about being proactive in creating the life that we want and getting very specific in what we want our life to look like. This week's lesson might seem counterintuitive to the work that we've just done. One, uh, two weeks ago when we were working on uh, reprogramming the subconscious mind to get rid of all of the bullshit that's not true. Last week, we were talking about bringing in what is true and what we want. And this week, we're gonna learn about burning it all to the ground. <laughs> it might seem to contradict what we've just been talking about, but go with me take the ride with me and take this week's lesson very seriously. The truth is the thing that's gonna get in the way of your boldly satisfying life is going to be expectations and clinging to outcomes. We've just designed your boldly satisfying day in our last lesson and in our time together one-on-one. -on -one. And it can be very tempting to hang on to that, to cling to it as the be all end all of life. Even our boldly satisfying life we can cling to because that's kind of what we're working towards, right? Yes and no. Now in truth, in order to have an exceptional life, we must be exceptional people. If we are exceptional people, an exceptional life is just going to be a natural result of that. If we want to have a joyous life, that's going to naturally come from being a joyous person. The key to all of this is surrender. That is something I really despised for a long, 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 long time. I thought my life was only going to be the way I wanted it if I had more control. When I first started recovery, I was like, I don't need to have less control. I need to have more control. That's the solution. It's all about control. The truth is, control is an illusion. We actually don't have control. And that's not what we're working towards here either. We're not looking for self-control. Do you want to control yourself? Maybe sometimes that feels important, especially when we've been in reacting out scenarios and in active addiction, right? It's like, just control yourself. I want to be able to control myself. I'm out of control. I need to be in control. But really, we're working to master the self here and to get to the core of who and what we truly are. And that actually means letting go of control, letting go of the illusion of control. Because even though we have and are continuing to grow our ability to have conscious choice in how we're showing up, even that is limited by so many factors, our past, our family, the ideas we were brought up in, perhaps the religion or the spiritual practice we were brought up in, or the lack thereof. Uh, we can get into past lives, astrology, dosha, all of the things that help make up who we are. And within that context, we gain conscious choice by gaining awareness and mastery over all of those things. And that comes in time. That's not like a switch we get to throw, right? And be like, hooray, now I've done it. Uh, that'd be neat. But, you know, the whole like, it's not the destination, it's the journey thing. That's cliche, but it's super true. So even our own control of ourself is limited until we get into that point of mastery. And that comes through surrender. What we do have and continue to have agency over are our choices and our efforts. We don't have agency or control over the outcome. And our suffering comes when our circumstances don't match our expectations, when what we have doesn't match what we want. Now, we know that this is a spirit-led path, whatever that means to you. Now, to me, that doesn't mean an external being that is dictating my life. That's not what that means to me. So when I say spirit-led, I'm really saying your higher self, your highest self, your truest self, that which is at the core of who and what you truly are. So when I say spirit, that's what I'm talking about. So your true self is guiding this process. 
the really cool thing about the higher self, the highest self, I like that term because it's, it depicts something that is above us, not superior too, because we are perfect and amazing, but higher up. It has a better view. It has a larger perspective than I do. Just by the sheer reality that I am in a limited perspective due to being in this tiny human body, right? I can only see what I can see. Our highest self can see all of the things. And so when I think back to the life that I thought I wanted and I would have like fought tooth and nail to have, I laugh because it's so small compared to the life my highest self has planned for me and that continues to expand. Some people receive this to mean we do nothing and we just sit and we just, well, whatever the, whatever the highest self wants, it'll just make happen and it'll just put here and then until then I'll just wait. That's not what we're talking about. So let me be clear about that. We do have responsibility. We do have a role in that and it's doing the efforts that move us towards our desires. Ah, desires. Let's touch on that a little bit and we're going to do so more in a later lesson. But our desires are kind of like signposts. We talked about having a map for our life and that that's what we were creating in our last lesson around designing our life. We were creating that map that we can then follow. Our desires are points on that map that lead us in the direction that is in alignment with who we truly are and the life we're here to live. Desires can be tricky because we might have defined wanting to uh, react out as a desire. Oh, I really want to do that. I really want to watch pornography. But we know now, and if you've come this far in, in the path, you know now that wasn't actually the desire. The desire was to receive connection, to receive love to be uh, accepted as we are to be seen, right? That was the actual desire. Is that desire a guidepost? Yes. Is the polluted craving that came out of it where we were trying to get our needs met in indirect ways the desire? No. I, I have a feeling you're starting to get to know the difference as you're getting to know yourself more and we're doing more of this work and recognizing what's true and what's not true within ourselves. So when I say desire, I'm talking about those things inside that are in our heart space that won't leave us alone. That no matter what we do and what we try, they just won't go away, right? It's that whispering voice that keeps me like, hey, hey, you should start your own business. Like, what about that business? You're gonna do that business? And you're like, shut up. I don't have the, the savings account to do that. And uh, my family's relying on me and I've never run a business. And it's like, okay, cool, cool. That's what I'm talking about when I say desire as a guiding light to that direction we are intended to head in. Now, a caveat. It does not mean in that example, you're intended to start a business. It means you are being called to move in the direction of starting a business. Whether a business comes out of it or not isn't the point, which is what this lesson is all about. It might mean, I'll give an example in my own life. I had a strong desire to move to Austin, Texas. Never been there, had no job, had nowhere to live. Uh, but it was like, I got to move to Austin, Texas. Was the purpose of that for me to end up in Austin, Texas? No, it was not. However, that's the place I needed to be to do my recovery journey. It, I had the people I needed to meet there and the tools and the resources, and the community I needed to be in recovery and to gain sobriety over sex addiction. I'm not in Texas anymore, right? And there could have been a part of me that went, well, I had such a strong desire to be there and it's helped me so much. It must mean I need to be here forever. That's trying to control the outcome and assuming we know what the outcome is. That is when we move out of alignment. That is above my pay grade. It's above your pay grade as well. Our job is to follow the desire as it's showing up right now and to put in the efforts for that. Now, in the example of starting your own business, that's the call. Maybe it's just that motivation to get you out of that job that's out of alignment, that's pulling you down. Maybe it's so that 
in the process, two years from now, you're going to meet the one person you need to know who actually is going to guide you to exactly where you need to be in that moment for the next thing that's coming, right? So we let go of the desire of the outcome. We surrender the outcome and we put our energy into the efforts. I love this, this lesson. I love this assignment. And I just love how annoyed you're about to get. <laughs> That's an assumption. Maybe you won't, but most people really don't like this one. And it's one of the best tools we have to take the driving wheel, the steering wheel away from the ego. Again, we don't want to destroy the ego. We don't want to throw the ego out of the car. We don't want to murder it. We just don't want it driving the car. It can be in the passenger seat or it could be in the trunk, but we want it in the car, just not driving. This exercise, this week's assignment is one of the quickest, most direct ways to boot the ego out of the driving seat. What you're going to do this week and perhaps continue it on, because I'm, I'm not telling you this is going to work in a week, but it is a practice that you can begin doing this week to learn, physically learn. Not, I'm not talking about learning about surrender. You're like, I know surrender. I know what that means. No, no, I'm not talking about learning surrender. I'm talking about having the experiential knowledge of surrender so that it becomes part of your comfort zone. And it's something you're able to do because let me stress this as profoundly as possible. If you are clinging to anything, you have attachment to the outcome, you will never get what you want. You will never have the life you're here to live. You'll never be the person you are here to be, who you truly are at your core. You'll have scraps. You're getting scraps if you hang on to that. And you're going to be in suffering every step of the way. And let's put it this way. If my hands are like this, because I'm clinging, how can the universe put a million dollars in them? How can I start my own business if my hands are like this? How can I love someone? How can I reach out and hug my beloved if my hands are like this? I can't. When we leave them open, we allow for things to come into our life, into our presence. And when they no longer serve us, they can leave easily. When we're like this, we get very little we miss out on things that are intended for us and we hold on to things that are far beyond their expiration date in our life and we suffer. If you're suffering, you are living like this. I guarantee it. Our practice this week is going to do this, right? <sighs> living open-handedly, surrender, able to receive, able to give, able to boldly live. Boom. That just came into my heart. All right. So what the hell are we doing? What do you keep talking about, Chase? This week, and for as long as you, you need to, I want you to create. I want you to actually put effort into creating something. Maybe, like for me, I'm a writer. So that might be writing, really sitting down. I, I'm a poet. So maybe sitting down and putting a lot of time into a poem. Maybe you do another form of art. Maybe you're a painter. Maybe you draw. Uh, maybe you trace and you do really great uh, recreations of other people's pictures. Maybe you uh, are a songwriter. Maybe you are a story writer or you write blogs or essays. Um, maybe you are a sculptor or a painter. Maybe you don't do any of those things, but you write really good speeches or you put together just like the best PowerPoint presentations for work, whatever it is, whatever is something you can create, I want you to do that this week. I want you to put in all of your effort to making it the best possible creation you can. At the end, when you're done, the moment you're done, destroy it. Do not take a picture of it. Do not show it to anyone. Do not post it on your social media. Do not tell anyone about it. Create it, and when you're done, destroy it. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm not going to put that much effort into something I'm just going to destroy. Well, then you're not understanding this lesson. This is not about doing the lesson. It's about understanding and getting the lesson, living 
the lesson, surrender. Our ego wants to say, but look what I did. Give me value, respect me, see me, appreciate me. Look at this thing, give me my worth. That's not where that stuff comes from. We cut the feet right out from under the ego when we put forth all of this effort for nothing except the effort itself. So for me, that might be a practice in the craft of writing. No one will see that poem ever because I burned it immediately, but nay, and I have advanced the craft of writing through the effort with your painting, with your PowerPoint presentation. The point is that we are focusing on the efforts, not the outcome. And by outcome, I mean the actual finished product and the results we want from it, that recognition, that acceptance, that love, that respect, whatever. We're letting go of all of that and we show it to no one. If you don't have a creative outlet that you like to practice in, or maybe it's something you can't destroy, like maybe you restore classic cars and you put a lot of effort into that, but burning that car at the end wouldn't be a great idea. A couple of things you can do. You could do the restoration, like put together the carburetor and then take it apart. Or you can do something like putting together a very difficult puzzle, actual like puzzle, beep, 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 puzzle pieces. And then as soon as you get the last piece in, you tear it apart and you destroy it. You don't admire it, you don't step back, you destroy it immediately. Maybe you can make card houses and really put in the effort, and those can be hard, right? Really put in the effort to building this like phenomenal card house and then knock it all down. Maybe you can do it with Lego bricks. That'd be really fun. Actually, please invite me over to do that. Whatever it might be, maybe it's mandala, maybe it's a sand castle, you're kicking it at the beach, create it, destroy it. Repeat, create, destroy, create, destroy, create, destroy until your hands are like this, until you're fed up and you go, ah, I'm fed up, I'm over it, ah, I give up. That's where we wanna be, that is surrender, where we go, I don't know what's best. I can only do this, I can only build the sand castle. That's it, that's all I can do. That's the truth and I wanna reiterate, it's not gonna work if you don't put in solid effort. Right. If I wrote like roses are red, violets are blue, uh, this assignment can go to hell and Jace can too. Like that's not really something I would care about being destroyed. That's not going to do the assignment. That's not going to get that disconnect from the that illusion of control. So I'm going to say this one more time. The point is to learn how to let go. If you are not invested, you will not learn that. You will not ever live an exceptional life while clinging to anything. You will not be in alignment if you're trying to be in attachment. You will not experience a boldly satisfying life if you are so hung up on it being exactly the way you want it to be. When we make conclusions, we rule out every other possibility. So think, maybe you wrote in your boldly satisfying day that you have a job that pays you a hundred grand a year. That'd be pretty nice, a little six figure action. Yeah, well, the universe was actually gonna pay you 500 grand a year, but you were so desperate to make only 100 grand. And the universe will say, okie dokie, whatever, because you're going to block every opportunity to make sure you're doing that thing that makes you a hundred grand. When maybe starting that business would make you a billionaire, but you don't want that. You want the thing you have your mind set on. So you cast out everything else. You're clinging. Oh, this job will make me a hundred grand. I get nothing else. And if you're just trying to hand you stuff, but you can't receive it because you're clinging, right? Let go. And we're gonna practice that. And it is a practice. This is not, you're not gonna build one sandcastle and then kick it over and be like, 
that's it. That's all I had to do. Now I'm a total master of surrender. This is one of the hardest things, which is why we're bringing it in early and right after we've had our boldly satisfying day lesson so that we can begin practicing this immediately over time. And this is one of the coolest ways to do it is to physically create and physically destroy, repeat. I want this to be something you do regularly until you're living open-handedly. Now, in tribe session, you don't get to tell us how cool the thing was that you created. You can say, I created a poem and destroyed it. And then we can talk about what came up for you when you destroyed it. We're going to talk through that and work through that. But we're not going to ever hear about what you created. And no one is. Please hear me. Because some of y'all are going to go and loophole this shit and you're not going to get it and you're wasting your time. So do this fully. Do what, what we're talking about completely or don't do it. Can you dig me? Do it completely or don't do it. There's no middle ground here. Put strong effort into creating something, destroying it immediately with no trace of it, no photo, no you're bringing your hubby in to take a look at it before you destroy it, not talking about it, nothing. Create, destroy immediately, never tell anyone what you did. I can't be any more clear than that. This is one of the most important keys for happy, healthy, vibrant, exceptional living. We've got to stop clinging. We get to learn it here today. I am very much looking forward to not hearing about what you do this week. I'll see you in session.